Hello and welcome to Global Custodian's end of day wrap up series at Cybos in partnership with Chainlink, where we are diving into the biggest talking points from the event. And with all due respect to T plus one, I've certainly found AI the most exciting and informative aspect of this year's conference. And to talk about this topic in depth, I'm joined by a panel of experts today. So we have Richard Anton, Chief Client Officer at CIBC Mellon, Kevin Welch, who leads up the transformation office at Brown Brothers Harriman, and Sergey Nazarov, co-founder of Chainlink. Welcome all. Great there. Thank you. Thank good, you. good. So um, we're here on day three after another busy day of discussions. Um, Kevin, uh, good day today. Really good day. Lots of good meetings, lots of good speakers. It's uh, and I think you're right. AI has been the hot topic across the board. So absolutely has. Yeah, like you say, dominating conversations we've been hearing about our firms using it internally and externally with clients and Richard I know you're fresh out of an AI panel so <laughs> I'll come to you with the first question and that really is that um, you know we've always had AI in the post-trade industry but what we're talking about now goes a bit beyond what we've used for many many years right yeah and I think people are starting to realize and wake up to the capabilities that AI has and it's really brought in their minds and I think part of it, and what the nice thing of being here at Cyvos is, has been sharing the experiences. It's really enlightening people to see the spectrum that you can get. I think a lot of people thought it was just an operational efficiency play that you can just, you know, deploy, get some cost efficiency within the business. But now you're starting to realize the capabilities are much more significant. You can have it really integrated across your entire organization, whether it's vertically or horizontally across your, your process flows. And now you're seeing it getting into the client side of the business as opposed to an inward capability. So quite powerful what we're seeing out there. Mm. Yeah, I think it's really interesting when you say that. I think we're kind of at an interesting point in the cycle where maybe we have, we as leaders are under or overestimating in the short term the benefits we're going to get. Yes. But I think your point is a really valid one. We're starting to see in the long term, once you kind of, kind of fix some of the data challenges, some of the human challenges with adoption, we're probably underestimating the transformation capabilities. Yeah, and so yeah, yeah what is, excites you about this technology in this space? I think it can take uh, pieces of data that were previously not understood by machines, like PDFs, uh, a whole bunch of stuff that underlies uh, existing people-driven processes, mm. and it can take all of that data and turn it from unstructured into structured data. That's what we did uh, in the corporate actions yeah. uh, system that we launched here at Cybos. And the corporate actions data that we applied AI to was from all kinds of you know plain text sources, news articles, various PDFs. And before you would have needed an army of people to do that. And so you didn't really do that. But now you, you can take data that was previously unusable and make it usable because hmm. the AI can um, can understand it in an efficient way. Uh, I think that opens up a lot of possibilities yeah. in, in terms of simplifying things and making things that weren't possible before possible. So that's that's the use case that I'm you know seeing a lot of attention to from our side. Yeah. Can I touch pace on on that? Because I think you're absolutely right, is especially when you think about that unstructured data and how it comes together. But now you can take it to the next level is you get the output out of that 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 tool and now you can turn it into data insights that instead of an analyst sitting there trying to interpret, well, why do I have that break? Why do I have that that divergence? Now the AI tools are telling you, well, this is why and this is how you rem remediate it. And now if you can only imagine that it can actually close the loop off and start to remediate itself, that's the next evolution that we see starting to to people starting to think about how you continue that chain all the way through. And I think it's a great point. One, uh, so I grew up in corporate actions. That's where I started my career. So I know the pain points. I think like when you talk about historical machine learning in our industry, it was structured data. And now we're in unstructured data. So those messy inputs are, are definitely where we're targeting this. But I like your point. We're moving from using AI to automate discrete tasks to actually thinking about using agentic workflows to automate the whole process. So it's identifying the exception, how could I resolve it? And then to your point, actually generating an email to whoever you need to follow up with. That's a completely different way of thinking about 
uh, using these channels and it goes away from automating to actually like redesigning the work. I think it's a mindset yeah. shift, right? I think this is where one of the human challenges is. It's a, it's a redesign tool as, as much as it is an automation tool. And how do you get people thinking that way? Yeah, agreed. Yeah. So you mentioned call for actions. Let's use that as a, a leaping point. Are there any other areas of post trade, any other processes you think that could be particularly beneficial for the use of AI? I, I don't think there's a step along that, that chain of post trade that you can't have AI embedded. Yeah. So we've started deploying AI agents across our payment structures and how, how we're having cash flows coming in. So one of the areas in some of the swift messaging is you have, you know, free text being incorporated and ad simple stuff as address information. Mm. Sometimes a city is forgotten. Well, an age, uh, an individual has to go out, do some research. Where is it based? Well, now you have agents sitting in the middle doing all of that research, finding out the information behind an organization. It can identify where the home base of where this wire is coming from and implement it right in the middle there. So. I don't think there's a process within that chain uh, across post trade all the way through to delivering the data back to, to our customers that is not open to AI. I think you just have to think, think more broadly in terms of an organization. Mm -hmm. And I think the important element, where are you on your organization maturity level? I think that's a key element. Yeah, I think that adoption framework is really critical. Like you said, the, the corporate action problem that Sergey described earlier is similar across the organization. So I think one of the things that we're looking at is how do you structure your organization to take advantage and adopt? So it's sort of a, a hub and structure, a hub and spoke mentality. So you have a hub that is looking at those patterns from the different use cases. Mm. They're identifying what are those reusable assets, whether they're agents, whether they're prompt engineering. And then you basically give those reusable assets to the entire organization have them apply them to their workflows, give feedback to the hub, and that's how you really scale. I think pilots show that there's value with the, with the model, but organization and culture are the things that let you scale. Agreed. And actually that brings me on to asking, uh, how would you say that firms are kind of rethinking their operating models now and then reskilling the workforce to account for this uh, new technology or, or new development in this technology? Um. I think organizations are really thinking about that right now because I think, I think really sessions like this and where, where we're at here, hearing what everyone is doing has really brought in the mindset of what's capable. I was at another panel earlier and we talked about what are these organizations going to look like five years? I was told I was evasive and I'm intentionally being evasive. I do not want to predict what five years from now is. Yeah. Because in the last year alone, what we have seen in the advancement has been so significant. Mm. So we've actually spent a lot of time investing in what you just highlighted is that training and excitement around our team. Are they prepared? Are they ready to adopt the AI? And we're celebrating some of these moments. So this past year, we brought in 90 university interns into our organization. And it was great because you have individuals who are unbiased to some of the operational control areas and what we can and cannot do. And we challenged them to, to rethink some of our operating models. And they, we did it in a hackathon mode. And it was so rewarding to see and exciting to see the energy they brought, first of all, the ability to think outside of the box. And what it did was two things. One is it pushed us to think differently but it also excited our employees to be part of that journey and wanted, wanted to contribute. So we now have that adoption mentality coming into across the organization. It's really interesting when you say that the pairing up of kind of your experience team with some of the more junior folks, and I think mindset really matters. It's, it's judgment, which you get yes. from folks that have been in the industry for a while. Pair that with persistence and creativity from folks that are new to the organization. And that's where you can really start to think about redesigning as opposed to just automating what you do to bet. Yeah. yeah. Good. Interestingly, we were on a panel on yeah. post AI and post trade. We asked the audience, uh, you know, about some of the impacts or actually it was, it was the, uh, well, the driver for using AI yeah. and 0% said it was to do with attracting talent, wasn't it? But I think we argued that actually it, it is a fact that they could only select one, unfortunately from the, from that selection. And um, as Sergey, do you, do you see any barriers for this kind of widespread adoption of, of AI in post-trade space? 
I, I think fundamentally people uh, trusting systems where they used to trust people before mm. takes a kind of uh, transition because the, the process they already set have set up. So, for example, for corporate actions, about 75% of them require manual intervention still. And so you have, uh, you know, you have a run book and you have a process and there's a person and you follow that process and you've come to trust it and you've come to find it reliable or reliable enough that you know what the liability is and you know what your risks are. Mm -hmm. And so now you, you, you have people come along and say, well, this process you've been using for 10, 20 years that you've evolved over 10, 20 years, that you know the risks and liabilities of, that you know the failure modes of, let's just replace it completely with this automated thing. And so that automated thing has to gain a certain level of trust. I think that, you know, that is, that is probably the, the biggest hurdle mm. is, is that, that factor around, you know, we have a system that works, we have it connected to other systems, we're depending on it. This automated thing sounds really good, but you, know, you, you almost need another push beyond the efficiency. And in the case of our work on corporate actions, we put them on a blockchain so that digital assets, uh, tokenized assets of various types could use them, which is a, which is a new market for corporate action consumption. So I, I think that if you can find a way for the more AI-driven, automated, post-trade process to give you access to a market or a new market or a larger part of an existing market, then you, you're not just pushing the efficiency, you're pushing uh, you know, revenue, which is always more convinced there. So I, I think that's really the, the, the biggest hurdle in the, in the post-trade process for, for its adoption. Mm -hmm. Hey, we talked about that in our panel the other day. I mean, I think that the, in the short term, folks are really, really focused on near-term operational efficiency. But I think as an industry, if that's where we stop, that's a failure. And I think leadership really has to push us to exactly what you said. How do we redesign? And a lot of that is its mindset. And it, it's really getting people comfortable that it's not paving the road that we have today to go faster. It's creating a new route, a new route, and it's potentially delivering our services and our products in a very different way than we do today. And that's that's leadership, and it's it's not just about tech to fund. It really is a change management exercise. Sure, I'll take it a slightly different route because I actually agree with both of the, these gentlemen around the people element, the leadership, and um, but I, I also think come back to uh, data is going to be a key element yeah. here. You know, our, I think corporate actions, a lot of the times you get, you, we have a lot of standardized data that we've been able to get, especially in the public markets around the type of information we need that we can, we can rely on that and really build great tools that Chainlink did here across, across the organization. But I think when you look at data across an organization, are you really using the right golden source data? Because that's going to be critical to seeing the success of some of these technologies and tools deployed across the organization. In addition to data too, what does your architecture look like? Yeah. I think you, you know you have to integrate the AI and if you've got five or six different systems, that can slow down integration as well. I agree. So I think that's another challenge. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, this is certainly a topic that's not going away. I imagine we're sitting here at the same time next year having the same conversations, but you know, it's moving fast, so uh, different angles to it. Thanks so much for your time today. Um, yeah. I hope you enjoyed the fun day of the conference tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.